Hey, this is Rob with Travels with Dottie, and I am excited to be at Deborah Dickinson's Cocoa Fest in City of Rocks, and we're in New Mexico. It's a beautiful place. She has her get-togethers here every year. Um, uh, her channel is Deborah Dickinson RV, RV Life, correct? Uh -huh. Or just Deborah Dickinson. Or just Deborah Dickinson, and she travels with Google RV Gal, which is another channel that I love. And I'm gonna, um, in the description, I'll put links to both their channels. So um, I was asked today to do a presentation on Starlink. Um, it's mostly for you guys that are seeing this online because there's only a small number of people here. Um, one of the reasons a lot of people didn't show up is um, people hear sort of negative things about Starlink. The first being the cost. And it's not inexpensive. Um, the kind of service that you'll want as a nomad is $135 a month. That's pretty substantial. Then there's an upfront cost for all this equipment. And right now, I think with tax and um, shipping, you can expect it to be between $600 and $700 one time upfront cost. Now, before I get started here, I want to tell you a little bit how I deal with um, getting on the internet. I do have part of my income stream requires me to do um, Zoom calls that are high quality. So I have lots of ways to connect or connecting. I have a T-Mobile plan, I have an AT&T plan, and I have a Visible plan, which is part of um, Verizon. And I also have a new one called, uh, new to me anyway, it's called HomeFi, and it's a little, um, little router, looks like an orange hockey puck. And basically what it does is when you get to a new place, it checks all three of those and connects to the one with the strongest signal. Um, and uh, I can answer questions after I do the presentation on how all those things work and what they cost and what my experience has been. Um, I'm somewhat of an early adopter with Starlink. I wasn't part of the beta. I got my unit in Quartzsite last January. Um, and Portability wasn't turned on, so uh, I it struggled with it a little bit in Quartzsite because the closest place I could establish an address to make it work was 10 miles away, so I got spotty service. Then the idea of portability got turned on while I was there, and I had much better experience. Uh, so I'm going to talk more about those details when I finish showing you how this stuff works. So in front of me are the five things that they ship you. The, the modem, a power cord for that. This is the actual dish, a stand for the dish, and a cord to connect the dish to the router. So I'm gonna put one more thing up here that's not included. I need power, so I have my little Jackery 300 here. So I'm gonna fire that up. I am going to um, the power, I'm going to connect to the bottom of the router, plug that in, and there, I'm going to plug in the line that goes to the, the actual dish, and I'm going to connect everything before I actually power up. So even though I'm plugging this in, I'm not going to push the power button on the gas yet, so everything's done. Um, the other, I'm going to take the other end of this cord and I'm going to plug it into the bottom of the base and I'm going to tuck this in the stand so it snaps down in there. And for you guys watching, I'm going to cut this and come back because you're going to see an empty space while I take this out to face, this is important, the northern sky. That's where the satellites for Starlink are in the north sky. So you need a clear view of the north sky. And I'll talk a little bit about what a clear view really means from a practical standpoint. So if you give me a minute, I'm gonna take it out there. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about my experience with Starlink and why I think it's great. Um, what I just realized too that the way I have to see that it's booted up and going is my phone which is recording me. So in a few minutes I'm going to ask Deborah to see if that the Starlink comes up on her phone. And maybe when it comes up, um, 
we can wait a few minutes and keep trying to speed test until it comes up. So it'll be about three to five minutes. Okay. So, Scarlet, what need was I trying to fulfill by getting Scarlet? I had all these, I told you I had AT&T, I still have AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. <coughs> I've got them all. And 95% of the places I was going, that was doing fine for me. Except there were places I knew I couldn't go. And in my friendship with Deborah, um, she told me when I, 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 I've only been doing this a year, it's coming up in a year, um, I was talking about RV parks and she smiles and she said, that's really nice, Rob, but I know you, you are going to love boondocking. You are going to fall in love with it as soon as you do it. And the really annoying thing about Deborah Dickinson, is she's, like, <laughs> she's always right. <laughs> and it's very annoying. But um, I went out to Quartzsite, I fell in love with the desert, and I fell in love with my solar and my, my lithium batteries, and my, my little, uh, they call them blue boys, the carts that, where you can yeah. put your poo into the <laughs> container and drive to the dump site instead of moving your rig. Um, so my first experience in Quartzsite, I, was, I didn't move my rig for, um, like six weeks and I was just in heaven yeah. and uh, the internet was hard there were signals everywhere in Quartzsite but in January there were so many people there you couldn't get any speeds nothing was working but my starlight worked it was amazing and um, this is kind of a cautionary tale if you get this I was camped with like a hundred people at a, a at a gathering of another youtuber and I said, hey, you guys can all use my Starlink. Here's my password. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, after about two days, I started getting notices from Starlink saying, illegal, illegal, copyrights, you know, copyright violation. It turns out someone was downloading copyrighted information from CBS the network and they were sending notices to Starlink and Starlink was saying this is you downloading this cop these copyright it was Yellowstone the series and they were da illegally downloading them off pirated sites so I learned my lesson there um, so when Deborah asked for my password I said absolutely not you can't be trusted <laughs> now what I've learned is is give share be generous share but um, be judicious in doing that. Do it with people that you know. Um, when you give your password out, tell them, don't give it to anybody else, this is just for you. Um, so anyway, I learned that lesson. And suddenly um, I realized that I could go just about anywhere where I have a view of the North Sky and I'm free to boondock wherever I want. As long as I have a view of the North Sky. I took a camp hosting job in North Idaho in a campground, 100, 150 foot trees, frigging everywhere. Right? I found one spot, um, probably 100 yards away from my, my, my camp hosting site, where there was a sliver of the North Sky. So when I set that out, what happened was, um, Starlink will tell you when you have obstructions and it, you won't get signal. And the statistics said at that time, in the beginning of the summer, I was blocked for one hour out of every 12 hours. And it was spread out of those 12 hours. So I could not use it for Zoom because it was cutting out too much. And But let me tell you about the happy thing that happened. They kept launching satellites. And by the end of the summer, it was down to, um, I think, uh, between seven and 12 minutes every 12 hours instead of an hour. So 60 minutes down to between seven and 12 minutes because they added so many satellites. And they've added more and more since then. So I suspect if I went back up there, I wouldn't have any obstructions because the more satellite Starlink is putting up, this is my, you know, people may argue the technical aspects of that, but I'm talking about my personal experience. I'm no expert, but my personal experience was what I got better and better signal in the same trees 
over time, and the only difference was they were launching more satellites. <laughs> so I choose to believe that's why. And there, there's plenty of evidence out there to support my view. Um, next summer, I'm going to be in uh, Camp Post in Yosemite, and I'm going to have the same problem with trees. And I bet you anything, if you check in with me next summer, I'm going to have I'm going to have good signal, and I'm not going to have obstructions because there are going to be so many satellites up there. Um, do we have signal yet? Yes, sir. Did you run a speed test? I can do that. See if it see if it's totally up. It usually takes a little while. Maybe sometimes maybe five minutes to to zero in. Um, what I didn't tell you is that dish has a little motor in it. It moves it around looking for the ideal spot. So I told you I need super reliable connections. And so what I do when I have a Zoom call with a client is I have a software called Speedify. And that allows me to bind two connections together. So if one has a hiccup, the other one is still there. So I don't skip out on calls. So I do that by having a, a second, like a USB Wi-Fi port. I, I, there's a, you can get a Wi-Fi receiver, USB, plug it into your laptop so it's got two receivers. And so I hook one to Starlink, one to whatever is the best one of my cell ones and it combines those together so um, when I'm having a meeting with someone on Zoom it never cuts out because I have that redundancy. Your, so your, your speed will probably improve but at this time it's 49 down 13 up. Okay yeah that I mean 49 down is no, great no. for everything that I do. Yeah. I, I could care less but I bet if, as we go through this and you try it later mm -hmm. it'll be over 100 down. Just tell me when you're ready. Just do it, do it as, as much or as little as you want. It doesn't matter. If that's all we see here, that, to me, that sells me. If I'm in a place in the wilderness and it's beautiful and Starlink is all I had and it's 49 megabytes down, I'll take it all day long. Um, if, if any corporation or city or anything would take that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, can, you explain, can you explain that about the speed? Okay, so basically... Um, uh, a, a download speed of 49 is really good because what would you need a minimum to stream, say, uh, regular definition movies? I would say you need about five. Okay? And I've watched stuff on one to two. You can do it, a little bit of buffering. But if you have five down, you can stream just about anything standard definition. If you want to go 4K and stuff, you need probably more than 20. But again, 49 is more than twice what you need for high definition. So it's 49, it's a good speed. Um, if you want to do things like Zoom calling, um, you need to um, pay attention to what's called the ping. It's, um, it sends a, a bit out and times how long it takes to get a return. Record. And it's in milliseconds. And Starlink is generally 100 milliseconds or less, and that's, that's fine for, for, um, for Zoom or any, tel any, any televideo call. Okay, so it's $135 a month. My other ones, I have, um, I, have, I have my own business, so I have a business AT&T account, um, and it's unlimited. It's, I think, $150 a month for my hotspot and my phone. But that's business class stuff and a little bit of overkill for most people. Um, I got grandfathered in somehow into a T-Mobile plan that's 100 gigabytes a month of high-speed data, and I'm paying $35 a month for that. Um, visible, I want to talk for a minute about visible. Has everybody heard of visible? Okay, um, visible. Um, they sell. They have phone service and um, hotspot service. And uh, when I got it, I think it, it was twenty five dollars a month. And I think it's either twenty five or thirty five. I'm not sure now. I know they changed terms recently, and I'm not really up on it. But I'm paying twenty five dollars a month for unlimited data on visible. And I have it in a little hotspot. It is throttled to five down, right? But it's great for everything I want to do. So often I'll combine Visible with Starlink, 
So if Starlink blips out for some reason, the visible will be there, and that's $25 or more. And that's really all I would need, except if I got in a place that had no visible signal and all I had was Starlink. And keep in mind, you guys, most of you do not need the redundancy. I do, because it's the business for me. So if Verizon isn't working, chances are I'm going to get um, T-Mobile to work or um, AT&T. Now let's talk about, um, I said I got the T-Mobile and it's 100 gigabytes. I, a typical single person that doesn't overdo it with gaming or downloading big files or doing super high definition stuff, 100 gigabytes will probably last you just fine for a month. Um, I think with my business, I'm around 200 to 250, but I'm doing a lot of those Zoom calls. Any more results there, Deborah? I'm testing. That, that's, that's amazing. So you probably do standard definition stuff. You don't do anything fancy to a big screen or anything. Yeah. And if you didn't hear what she said, she has a, visual, uh, a Verizon plan of 15 gigabytes a month. For her and, hotspot. Huh? For her hotspot. And she does a, a lot of streaming. And like me, too. I like to have it on in the background. I might not even be paying attention. And I may fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And it may go all night while I'm sleeping. But she says she can almost make it through every month on 15, and that's that's really good. You gotta be you gotta use standard definition. Um, you can't use high definition stuff or big TV screens. If you're doing standard definition on your phone or a tablet, you're gonna be a, a fairly low user of data. Gonna address usage on Starlink. There's different classes of service. And if you're a nomad, you probably want, they call it RV class of service, right? The residential class of service is designed for you to be at one location all the time, like your farm that doesn't get cable or fiber, and you get what they call their premium service up to um, a terabyte of data. Now, a terabyte. Um, he says he uses 300 a month. That's over three times that. So you get the priority service if you have what they call the residential service up to a terabyte, and then it's called best effort service. So you're deprioritized in the, the um, sort of satellite cell or physical area that you're in. It allocates bandwidth. So the residential people, the, like, I'm here, I'm not a, re my residence isn't here, so I'm what they call a, um, a roamer in this area. So I don't get the high priority residential service. But if people down the road have it, and it's, they have residential service, they get priority over me. And this is especially noticeable between the hours of 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? And I have traveled all over this part of the country from down here to up almost into Canada. And I can tell you that it does slow down at night, but it's never prevented me from doing anything that I wanted to do in the slowdowns. And, and the slowdowns, at, again, as they're launching more satellites, I noticed it's getting better and better. Now, I am a resident, I have a residential service with portability, right? My residential service is $110 a month. And then to, to and guess where my residence is? It's the La Posa South <laughs> in Quartzsite. So, um, and I'll explain why I did that in a minute. Everywhere else I am, I'm in roaming and I'm deprioritizing deprioritize. Um, there's another service called RV service where you don't need any home base at all and you're always, you're, you're completely mobile, you're deprioritized all the time. So that terabyte maximum doesn't apply to the RV service and quite frankly it doesn't really apply to me either. It, it, 
except for the few months I'm in Quartzsite. But I would never use a terabyte of data. I, 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 I don't, if I tried to do it, I'm not sure that I could do it. So basically, I spent five or $600 for this equipment. I pay $135 a month and I love it. You know, I feel like um, I can get Starlink just about anywhere and I'm camming on it. I got my fingers crossed about Yosemite uh, because there's no cell signal where I'm gonna be in Yosemite. I'm gonna be at um, Crane Flat Campground, 6,000 feet in Yosemite. I will thankfully have um, water and sewer, but no electric and then zero cell signal up there. Wow. So I'm, I'm counting on Starlink to save me <laughs> in Yosemite next year. And I'm, I'm pretty confident about that. Um, usage of power. It uses about 50 watts. Uh, yeah, it uses 50, 50 watts. Um, and I have it on 24 hours a day. Um, but you can always turn it off when you're not using it. The other thing about Starlink, too, is um, most of your carriers allow Wi-Fi power. Right? So if I'm out in the boondocks and all I have is Starlink, I'll be able to make and receive phone calls using Wi-Fi phone. And I do that very, like here, I have, I have an at and and I have no signals, but I've been making uh, phone calls the whole time here using Starlink with Wi-Fi calling. So do you ever do that when you're traveling? So you no. can get a better and prioritized? I could. But, but one, I don't want to lose my spot in Quartzsite because mm. uh, I want to have that priority in okay. December and January. And, so yeah. otherwise, I might, you know, I might be trying to, but it really, to me, for my purposes, it doesn't make that much difference. I'm not desperate to get that priority service because, like Deborah said, she did a speed test and it's that. 40 to, now, if I lived here, I would probably be getting 150, right? But I don't need it. So that, that we need to emphasize, mm -hmm. those numbers that I was calling out to you guys is deprioritized, low priority. And if that, that's and typical. Still have those so well, let, me, let me be accurate. At night, when it's at its worst, I've been in places with my Starlink where I've gotten two to three now. From you know, 40, 50, I've seen up to 200, 250, and I'm down to two at eight o'clock at night. But what? I'm still streaming. Yeah. I'm still doing what I need to do.